Do you have an oven that has been scrubbed clean so you can't see the temperature of it and you don't know what settings are at? So because some before they came in here, the previous landowner decided to scrub it all clean to make it all nice and present for the for the inspection. But in doing so, they didn't give you any tools to be able to cook bread. And that's what all the cool people are doing these days. They're cooking bread. And I wouldn't really cook bread, but I don't have an oven that I can set to a correct temperature. Otherwise, it might burn or undercook. And I don't really want to do that and put all the effort into making bread just for it to undercook. But I do have an air fryer. So instead of making bread in the oven, I'm going to make bread in the air fryer. Does this, does this sound all familiar to you? Well, if so, I'm going to make two recipes of bread in the air fryer, a loaf and some buns. So let's get started with the loaf. I don't have a scale, so this is gonna be interesting. We're gonna start with our flour. So we are making some bread. We are going to do half, half sots of this. So we have a bag of two kilograms and we're gonna do 500 grams, so about a quarter. I really gotta get scales, holy crap. Um, that's about a quarter. This is not how you make bread. <laughs> Tomorrow <laughs> I'm gonna get some scales, but I need to make this today. Or at least try. Five, so two and a half tablespoons, teaspoons of yeast. Yeah, I'm gonna get some scales so I can actually bake and cook things better. So that's one, two and a half. Some salt. All right, and then we want 310 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius. I know for a fact that water at a certain temperature is per litre is per gram. So that's probably around right. That's around 310 grams of water. Now it's, it's and it says use a wooden spoon or silicon spoon, but I'm just gonna use my hands because I think that just works the best. And we just gotta make sure we get all, all of the flour. And it should be a, consi a flaky consistency, which means I should probably add some more flake here. Oh, this is very hydrated, very hydrated. So let's just add some more. One day we will get, we we'll actually do this more accurately. Okay, so this is starting, there might actually be too much flour. I mean, it looks very hydrated, very hydrated. I'll just give it a tad more. I just think it needs to be a little bit drier. Like it's not smooth yet. Uh, I think this is probably around good actually. All right, let's just say that's good. <laughs> It's very hydrated. And now we just leave it to proof. I'm just gonna use a damp towel. I find often when I have to dry myself, damp towel. Don't mind this, that's from my last video, the Picaronas. And then we just let that proof in there for a little, for I don't know, an amount of time. We shall see. I think double in size is usually the way to go. They say up to two two hours minimum, so that's kind of crazy. So well, I guess we'll wait for an hour, and then maybe we'll go to two hours. Let's see, it's been a couple hours. Let's see what it's looking like. Maybe I should have done a damp towel. Oh no, this is definitely double in size. I think this is too hydrated. It just feels too hydrated. But it's definitely risen. Let's. Uh, <laughs> Let's give it a go, I guess. Um, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. I know, we'll give it a go. Um, if not, I bought, <laughs> I bought scales so we could try again. <laughs> I guess, yeah, what we're gonna do is just... I just, it looks way too hydrated. It just, I don't think it's meant to be like this. We're just gonna give it our best shot. See what happens when I chuck in the air fryer. Actually, I've got to proof this again for another. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. 
not going well at all. Now where's, where's the scissors at? I have a feeling this is just not going to work how I expected it to. It looks, it just looks way too wet. Like it's like pizza dough. And we leave this proof for another 40 minutes. It just looks way too wet. Ay, ay, ay. This is going to be a disaster. See how it goes, I guess. Okay, we've left it to proof for another 40 minutes in the tray. And now it's time to put in an air fryer. And I have no doubt that this is not going to work. It just doesn't look right and feel right to me. So we'll give it a go though before probably having to try again. So here we have it in the air fryer and we are just going to, well I guess, close the lid first. And I couldn't preheat it because obviously I used, I used the bottom pan for the actual bread. But we're going to check on bacon roast and and we do 210 for now it says 35 minutes on the recipe I'm basing it off but because we are not at that temperature right now I'm just going to add in an extra 10 minutes and we are going to see how this goes I have very small hopes that this is going to work out well but you never know we might have a nice bread afterwards so I guess see you in 45 minutes I may check it on it in like no, nah, no, nah, we'll see at the end. And I'll just make sure there's no burntness happening. <laughs> As you can see, I stopped at about five minutes left to go. And, you know, it's it's looking cooked. I probably will have it, probably say this is done. Seems like if I put it in there a little bit too long ago, it'll get a bit more burnt. It's definitely an interesting shape. I didn't score it or anything. And it's very flat. But we'll put it onto a tray, we'll let it rest, and then we'll see what it's like. We have our bread that's been cooled off for a little while, right here. Um, <laughs> let's have a check. It's still warm. So it's been cooling off a little while. A bit brown on the top, but let's cut it open, shall we? Oh, it's just collapsing. It's probably still gonna cool down a little bit. It's cooked. So it's not looking too bad. It's uh... <laughs> mm. I made the bread. It's got a, a really nice crust on it there. Really nice crust, really nice crust. I just want to see what it's like in the middle. I mean, it's definitely cooked. I mean, look at that. That's not too shabby. That's not too shabby at all. I mean, like, that's fully cooked. It hasn't risen too much. I think it was, it's very, it's still quite moist in there. But this could, <coughs> this could be like a nice focaccia. Like if we cut it lengthwise, very soft as well. I mean, it's not a, it's not a full on disaster. I just think the start of the yeast was a bit wrong. But yeah, I'd say it worked. It worked well. I probably just need to test a few different ways. This is a, was a very wet dough when I put it in, but it still came out good. Nice, really nice crust to it, like really nice crust. Do we put on like 210? 210 for 40 minutes from cold? Yeah. I'd say, I'd say, considering how it started off with, considering how it started off with, I'd say this is actually a success. It cooked through, we got some nice crust on it, a nice bottom as well. Not, not as crusty on the bottom, not, not as crusty on the bottom, but that's not, that's pretty good. Just a little bit on the darker side on the top here, but I did buy, I did buy some scale, so I might give this another go, but I have enough bread for a little while, so the next thing we do is gonna be making some, uh, some buns. 
So to start off with, we are going to be making a Tenzong. So we'll need some... So it's at zero, so zero the scales. I bought some scales yesterday, I bought some scales. We need 60 grams of milk. Perfect, 60. 21 grams of water, or 27. All right, that was a bit more, that was like 30. I'm sure it'll be fine. 20 grams of bread flour, so let's zero that. So that's nine, so about the same as that. Slightly more. 20, perfect. We'll put on to medium heat, onto the stove, and uh, yeah, start making it into a paste. It's already starting to become a paste. Just a little bit more. Look at that. So this is gonna make it hopefully kind of super fluffy. Alright, so that's a good start so far. Tanzong! Alright, next up we are gonna heat up some milk to 35C, so 120 grams of whole milk. It is so nice to have a scale. All right, so we're gonna heat it. This up to 35. Oh, don't tell me it wasn't recording. All right, we've mixed our 320 grams bread flour, 35 grams sugar, and seven grams sea salt all incorporated. I don't think it was recording when I did this. Uh, so yeah. We shall see what did get recorded and what didn't, because now I'm a bit s s sus of it all. And next we're going to just get an egg yolk. That seems pretty good. One egg yolk and we'll just leave it in, in here for easy access. Okay, it's time to add in our wet to our dry ingredients. So I've let the yeast and the milk which was cooking at 35C, which got cooked up, uh, heat up to 35C and added nine grams of yeast, as we can see here. So apparently just add it all in slowly. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this as a, I, everyone uses a stand mixer, so maybe I should invest in a stand mixer at some point, uh, cause I'm doing a lot of uh, breads and doughs lately. Okay, that's the milk. Then we also need to add in the egg yolk and another whole egg. One-handed crack. That wasn't too bad. That was pretty sick. One-handed crack. Keep on mixing. All right, now, now we need to add in the tanzong as well. <laughs> Just scoop it in, I think. There we go. We're just gonna have to do that. And I think we're gonna have to use both hands here. How much are stand mixes these days? Oh my gosh. I'd say that's kind of well incorporated. Seems pretty well incorporated to me. All right, next we've got to slowly add in some butter. Yeah, that's probably good enough. So now we have our butter. Slowly add in this amount of butter. This is gonna be interesting. Our dough with the butter all incorporated. And now, grab the dough out of the bowl. We make it nice, uh, make it kind of nice and tight into a bowl. Like that, that's, looks pretty cool. Not gonna lie, and then place it into a bowl in our little kind of bowl, but a saucepan. Now we're gonna let this proof for a couple of hours. Back on with our towel. And then we're just gonna do the same trick we did and chuck in the oven with the light on. All right, after proofing, let's have a look see. I'd say that's doubled in size. I don't know about you guys. I don't know, I feel like it was maybe a bit too warm in there. Look 
going to split into six equal pieces. We are going to we are going to measure these out to like 100 grams each. What about this? Too much. And we're going to try and use the tension to make little balls like that. Look at it. And make little balls. Dude, these are looking kind of cool. Look at that. Now we're going to prove this again. All right, it's been one and a half hours. Let's have a look at these. These buns look like they've risen. Ooh, look at that, look at that. Look at those buns, eh? They look pretty sexy. Let's create a little bit of an egg wash. Put in just a tad of milk and just an egg. I'm gonna try this just dropping on the ground to crack it method. And now we're just gonna whisk this up. Get all nice and incorporated. So yeah, my battery literally just ran out as I was making the egg wash, so I just gonna have to do the rest on my phone. Um, so yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. So I've preheated this air fryer to 190, and we're just gonna put in as many buns as I can without overcrowding it. So I reckon three will probably fit in there. Here we have three, three buns in there. Uh, hopefully they'll be okay. You can kind of see we've a you can kind of see we've applied the egg wash. So now we're gonna cook them. All right, bacon roast, we're gonna do 190 for 60 minutes. And we should get some nice buns out of this. All right, it's finished and I haven't actually checked them. So I'm slightly worried. Yeah, they're a bit on the burnt side. I guess I'll put them in for like maybe 15 instead. Nice and hard, I mean they are. I wouldn't presume they're cooked. All right, I got three more to do, so uh, we'll we'll test it out with a lower temperature. All right, I have my second batch here, and it's quite warm in there. All right, let's go bake it. All right, let's go 170 for 15. Let's try this out. 170.15 preheated. Um, I might check them before. Maybe I'll check them at like 10, see how they're looking, and then I'll. Uh, yeah, see what's going on. All right, it doesn't smell burnt, so let's just give it a cheeky look. Oh, that's not looking too bad, actually. But is it cooked on the inside? I don't know. Should we just say that's done? Yeah, it's done. All right, so 10 minutes, 170. Still on the browner side, but still look, so it's not too bad, though. And here we have our bun. So yeah, this is the first lot, a uh, bit on the darker side. The second lot look a lot nicer. Only in there for 10 minutes. But yeah, so these are going to be used for my lunches for the week. Yeah, air fryer bread. And there we have air fryer, or bread made in air fryer, which I'm sure some of you may have an air fryer, may want to try it out. Maybe if you don't have an oven like me that has the temperature, so you can't really do accurate bread. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit, I did a different style of me talking as I'm cooking rather than a voiceover, which I think, I think I prefer that. I'm not very good with the voiceovers and they feel very dull to me. Um, let me know if you enjoyed this style of video. And yeah, let me know if you have any extra thing. If you, if you did enjoy this, please subscribe, please like the video. Uh, I would really truly appreciate that. Uh, I know that you probably don't like people telling you to subscribe and stuff, but apparently if you tell people to, they often do. Peace out. And if you have any suggestions of what you want me to try and cook next, something the air fryer, a pressure cooker, a meal, a type of dessert, anything you can think of, then yeah, just comment down below. Or if you have any questions about the bread I made, I might do a part two to this where I do improved bread. We have an improved version of bread. Because that first one we did was a bit of a, it was a bit of a dumpster fire. But uh, yeah, thank you all for watching and I hope you have an excellent week and day and month. Peace.